Hey everybody, Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the great honor and pleasure of chatting with someone who almost doesn't need introduction, yet I will, Chris Kale from Five Finger Death Punch. Yay! Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Good to be here. Excited oh. about the interview. Well, it's so great to have a chance to chat. I've been kind of doing a little homework, and I looked back, and you did an interview with one of our collaborators, Tim Reiser, back in 2013, I believe. Yeah, 2013. And so almost a decade later, <laughs> here we are getting yes. getting caught up. But I can back up. Perfect. There we go. But there's always some stuff we want to find out about. I like to always go to the past. How did you get started in music and particularly on bass? Uh, well, with me, it was Gene Simmons right from the very beginning. I was four years old watching a show called 321 Contact. And they were doing like a, a thing about all the crew and the lighting and all that stuff. And I remember at the age of four when I saw Gene, it was like, I don't know what he's doing, but whatever that is, that's what I want to do. And then just, yeah, my mom played the clarinet or the flute, so she got me playing the clarinet. So I learned how to read music doing that and got in the band setting. And then when I was old enough to uh, start my own lawn mowing business, I bought my, my first bass guitar, which was a BC Ridge Warlock NJ series from way back in the day. Nice. And uh, and now, fast forward all those years, and BC Ridge signature artist with the Chris Kale uh, Warlock out here. So. Full circle. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. And are you pretty much self-taught? For the most part, yeah. I had a couple of lessons. There's a guy named Ben Lacey back in um, Kentucky. Any players out there, I highly recommend checking him out. Just incredibly talented. Very, like, all over the place. He literally, like, will play full pieces. You know, playing the drum parts, the guitar parts, and the bass. Oh, wow. Like, guitar, like slapping and popping. and it's, it's incredible. So I took a couple of lessons from him. But for the most part, it was just kind of just figuring out songs that I loved, getting musician magazines back in the day with all the tablature and whatnot. <laughs> uh, the, the kids today have got a, such an incredible advantage with all the YouTube and the playthroughs and all that stuff. I had to wait each month for a guitar magazine and hope that it was a song they gave a damn about. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Well, if nothing else, I think back in the day we learned patience because... Okay stuff wasn't right when you wanted it we would do an order for example model rockets my friends and i would all group our, our funds together so we could get something free and then we'd wait for like three months until it showed up oh yeah yeah not like uh, well, this i ordered this at noon it should be here at five absolutely absolutely yeah. same day or next day delivery there it is oh the stone age we used to live in i tell you but coming back to current times five finger death punch how did that come about i was actually bartending in vegas and I had heard through the grapevine that they were looking for a bass player. I just got my name in there. I mean, I literally, it's the best sliding into DMs in the history of sliding into DMs. <laughs> I didn't know anybody in Death Punch, but we had a lot of uh, mutual friends there in Vegas. And I uh, just went direct to Jason Hook one day, cold call. Hey, I hear you're looking for a bass player. And then two weeks later, I think I had the gig after doing auditions and whatnot. Nice. Yeah, nice. I joined uh, Death Punch in May of 2011. I had to think about it, yeah, because I heard they were looking for a bass player shortly before that, but the, the gig, I can't remember if I got it in May or if it was announced in May, but it was all right around there. So I've been doing this band for 11 years now. Nice. Yeah, Count, counting the uh, the growth rings. <laughs> this right here, that's the beginning of the band. There, there we go. There we yeah. go. <laughs> the really cool thing, right now you guys are on tour, the, hence the, the, the curtains and the lovely green room exactly. where, where you are. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm this, sitting in the presence of greatness with Andy James right over here as well. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I got, finally got him to put that guitar down for two seconds so I could do an interview. <laughs> <laughs> just, we all know how guitars start. Oh, oh man. man. Tell me about it. But hey, they're good people. What can I say? That is true. Wouldn't be possible without them. You know? <laughs> and this particular tour, this is the Brantley Gilbert tour? Oh, yeah. Yep. It's us, Brantley Gilbert, and Corey Marks. I have just done some songs with Corey Marks. We did the collaboration with Brantley Gilbert on the uh, Blue on Black video that we did. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it was just one of those things, trying something new, you know, getting two country artists out here. And honestly, when I first heard about it, I was like, oh, I'm hard rock, punk, heavy metal, hardcore. I'm like, I don't, I'm not going to be able to sit back in the green room and listen to the country. Yeah. But they actually got a heavier edge. It's more like a, like a hard rock country kind of thing. So I was like, okay, this ain't bad. This ain't bad. I'm, I've been enjoying it. And as people... Awesome. Like Corey Marks, I just got, he brought this back as an end of tour gift. Oh, wow. His record, signed it out to us. 
Brantley Gilbert's been great. It's just been a really fun time. Just, every night is like a party, and everybody's having a good time. It's it's a lot of fun. Also, you guys have a new album, Afterlife. Oh, yeah. And I understand it's kind of interesting because it's the ninth album, and it's a, going to be kind of a graphic novel as well. So it's got this really cool sci-fi oh, yeah. total like storyline that just sucks you in. Tell us a little bit about this thing. There has been a treatment written to do a full like every video, every song doing it. So we'll see how how the ambition in that goal turns into practicality and feasibility and actually doing it. But yeah, it's uh it, that's one of the the positive byproducts of the pandemic is that we had time to really sit around and think about, you know, new marketing ideas. Had tons of time to write the uh, the record Afterlife because Normally, when you're doing records, it's sandwiched in between this tour and that tour and press photos and interviews and all that stuff. But with this one, just had didn't know when things were going to get back to normal. Mm -hmm. normal. And yeah, just really took the time to, to really get creative, to spend the time that we needed on the songs, allow things to, to really grow naturally and try new chances and whatnot. And we've done that across the board from marketing with the graphic novel, the videos, coming up with this idea for pairing hard rock and heavy metal with, you know, country hard rock. Yeah. At the same time. So yeah, just time to, time to really keep the brain going, you know, cause there's a lot of time to fill. And if you don't have positive outlets, then it doesn't end up well. And we ended up making it work and got the new record, new tour, just all kinds of stuff. It's been, it's been nice to really have that time to hit the pause button keep on going creatively. It's been nice. This tour starts kind of getting close to wrapping up. There's also kind of the continuation to next year. What, what'd you hear? Well, I, I've, I've been seeing, you know, a world tour mentioned for 2023, 2024. So oh, yeah, with a bucket list band that I've always wanted to tour with, we get to go out with the metal gods, Metallica. Oh, wow. Absolute bucket list world tour all around the place. I know they've got some dates that they've already announced. There's more stuff being planned, so don't be don't be coming at me. Like, Why not here? Why not here? First of all, I play bass. Yeah, with an agent. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. been such a, especially because of the pandemic. So many tours had got kind of they were going to happen, and then they couldn't happen, yeah. or they'd get going and somebody gets sick, and then things would change, and you know the the truth changes, and it's required a real flexible response, but. It's we're seeing more and more solidity when they're or projecting something's going to happen. It's getting to be a little more concrete nowadays. Exactly. So that's that's just great. That's one thing I've noticed too with ticket buying too is before you'd have a ton of pre-sales. Mm -hmm. Pre-sales would be crazy, but then with the pandemic, so many tours got canceled that we're finding you know slower pre-sales. But then by the time the show arrives, everybody's like, okay, it's actually happening. And I've seen other shows out there. See us posting all the updates, and people are waiting a little longer to to buy tickets. You know, I don't want to have to cancel a tour and then people be out money from hotels, driving, all that other stuff. So we've taken pretty serious measures to make sure when we announce dates, that's it, it's going to happen because we were victims of having to cancel some stuff, just like everybody else during the whole pandemic, and yeah, just taking the precautions and whatnot to make sure that we continue being able to play in front of the fans out there because we waited a long time. They waited a long time and we don't want to go back to sitting at home as, as creative as it was mm -hmm. for it out here. <laughs> totally. Totally. Well, and again, as things get more under control and notwithstanding unforeseen circumstances, because like even Aerosmith had a run planned and with Steven Tyler, not feeling well, they had to kind of bag the, the last of the couple of dates they had planned. So yeah, Yep, you never know what's going to happen out there. So it's just got taking the next right step each time that we can to make sure that uh, hopefully none of that happens. But you also got to allow for the chaos that is rock and roll in the world in general. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And let's come back to your signature bass, BC Rich. Yep. And that kind of ties into how are you getting your sound? Yeah, starting with your bass, tell us a little bit about your sound chain. My sound chain is pretty simple, really. Like, I don't do a whole lot of stuff. I've never been like a huge gear guy. I know the tones that I want to get, and I know how to tell someone else who is, is great at the equipment stuff. Like, this is what I'm trying to go for. So it's been nice having uh, techs along the way that have really kind of helped me with their expertise. Like, my expertise, obviously, would be, like, the bass playing, mm -hmm. making sure that I'm able to do the background vocals, um, 
uh, writing, all that good stuff, the performance and all that stuff. And yeah, between the BC Rich Warlock, that's the bass that I saw Nikki Six playing way back on like Looks to Kill. <laughs> so to be able to have the bass that I bought with my own money in the very beginning be my signature model right now. It's got the uh, EMG PJ pickups in there. So a lot of the tone comes from that. It's got mm -hmm. a good, strong bite. Yeah, the aesthetics, it kind of goes with like my vibe. It's almost got like an old school chopper yeah. motorcycle vibe to it. And then the EMG pickups, clear, love those things. Goes right into a Sans amp and into my Mesa Boogie. And I got a couple of other little things here and there just to kind of tweak some stuff. But essentially, that's the rig minus the uh, the Sure Wireless. And what else am I missing in there? My Corey Tuner. <laughs> there you go. Got to yeah. stay in tune. Mm -hmm. Do you have a preference in strings? Yes, I use the uh, Dunlop. So my <laughs> string setup, I play a four-string bass, but it's set up like a five-string without that high a string on there. So I've got 130, 110, 90, 70s on there so it's essentially a, a five string tuned down to b which is what we normally play in a couple songs in a here and there but uh yeah that's 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 the setup for me i play bass i'm not trying to do solos and, and all that <laughs> stuff just give me the rumble on the bottom and i'm good excellent i, I don't excellent. even play bass so much i beat the shit out of it that's my that's my style <laughs> absolutely and i've heard a lot of players a lot of people are really thrilled with sans amps Oh yeah, and as a matter of fact, I, I don't know if you've heard because it's still kind of on the on the quiet end. But Frank Bello from Anthrax is working with Tech Twenty One on kind of a signature Sans amp. Ooh, nice! And they were touring it in Europe, mm -hmm. and the greatest compliment he felt where people came up after the show and said, "What is that pedal you're playing? Because it's just a white box right now. It doesn't oh, okay. even have any." markings or anything it's like the plain brown paper bag there oh yeah that's funny it's like when the new model cars are being driven around exactly like, oh here's the body that's it yeah but the fact that they like the way it's sounding was like okay this is getting very promising so oh, yeah. when Frank, i talk well, been doing it for a long time wonderful bass player with great tone so i'd be interested in checking that out too oh absolutely absolutely and and such a such a cool guy i mean he, he couldn't help himself he had to let the the rabbit out of the bag on that one yeah. <laughs> he's like i i'm not supposed to be telling you this but that's quite all right it's all over the press now yeah yeah it's now everybody right. knows yeah <laughs> consider it an advertiser for the new Sans amp box when it comes out there for you. Absolutely. Well, we'll know that your name will be on the early list. That's right. Tech 21, <laughs> give me a call. I want to try that out too. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. And as we look ahead, I know there's the tour plans for 23, 24. Are there any other plans? And you're on a new album right now. A lot of times you just got your hands full with what you're doing currently. But yeah, we're, we're pretty good about projecting plans on down the road. So continuing to be in the moment, be present and doing what we're doing. But then also really planning. I mean, this Metallica thing, it's been in the works for a while to have the opportunity to go out and play those huge stadiums. I, I, it didn't really hit me how big the thing was. I mean, obviously, it's Metallica, and you're like, oh, it's going to be huge and all that. And we've done our fair share of, of headlining dates here with massive festivals and all kinds of stuff. We went to see the Minnesota Vikings play um, a couple weeks ago at their stadium. And I walked in, and the crew was super happy to see us. Got us a sweet shaking hands and all that stuff. Just like, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing you guys out here. And I was like, yeah, it'd be great to play out here. And Charlie was like, we're playing here. And that's the first time that I looked around. I was like, oh, my God, that is a lot of people. We're really excited about that. Yeah. Uh, and we did some dates with Metallica over in Europe in June and July. So kind of kind of met the guys really. Uh, they were kind of scouting, watching. So, all right, what's going on? How the crews work together? And luckily, luckily, we passed the audition. Now world tour with Metallica. Excellent. And if people want to know more details, maybe to see if you guys are going to be at a venue near them, looking at fivefingerdeathpunch.com, would that be the yep. best place? That's got it. Yes, sir. Excellent. Excellent. Yep. Anytime we put some dates, that's going to be the place to go to. And uh, we definitely plan on being out there as much as possible. I think we're taking a break from our last show here, December 17th in Vegas, our first show with Metallica, April 29th. So we'll see what kind of creativity we can fill up that uh, those four months with. Guarantee you, we're not the band that's going to stop working and, and taking a break. We're, we're not those dudes. This is our passion. This is our, our fun. And it, it, it's nice to be doing it and seeing the fruits of the labor after all these years coming into opportunities like, like we have out here now. And such incredible support, not only from our fans, but we're excited about getting in front of the Metallica fans who may not have heard. You've for sure heard the name. The name's everywhere. Oh, yeah. You might not realize, oh, that's. 
a Death Punch song. So we're looking forward to getting in front of those people and, and winning that crowd over as well. And playing for all the fans of, of or ours that's going to be coming out there and support as well. Nice. And who knows how many country fans you'll win over with this current tour. Because, again, music is so evolving mm-hmm. that the lines are getting really blurred between what is what anymore. You know, Absolutely. so that, that's a total interesting part. Oh, yeah. And with the availability of so much music and so much videos and, and everything else out there, it's much easier now to find new music that's kind of different than what you would normally listen to. So we're, we're definitely finding that out. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't realize that I was going to be a, a hard rock country fan, but I'm liking being out here with Brantley Gilbert and, and Corey Marks. So isn't that wild? Even this, even this punk rock, hardcore, heavy metal kid can can enjoy uh, quality music when it's quality and they're doing it quality. Absolutely. Well, and I, I will remind people too, a lot of social media places, I'm sure you guys are helping to spread the word about stuff there as well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all over the place. So, okay. Yep, and we all individually uh, handle our own accounts. So uh, we're very hands-on, very DIY. Even as, as big as this thing has gotten, we've maintained uh, quality control and we, we are micromanagers on everything. So anything you see out there, it's coming from us. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, Chris, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule, coming to us from tour. As, as they always say, break a leg. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and we'll look forward to seeing the rest of Afterlife and all that incredible stuff so far. Super creative. Just blown away by watching it. Folks, Thanks. you've seen him here. Chris Kale on Bass Musician Magazine.